Okay, chapter 22, Lycra Lynch Mob. An angry mob of ballroom dancing enthusiasts chased the little brown car down the street. Looking out of the back window, Ben thought this would perhaps be the only time in history a lynch mob was dressed entirely in lycra. Dad put his foot down on the accelerator. Vroom, they turned a corner and lost them. Thank goodness I was there to give Flavio the kiss of life, said Mum from the front seat. He was just unconscious. He hadn't stopped breathing, Mum, said Ben from the back of the car. You can't be too careful, said Mum, reapplying her lipstick. Most of it now was smeared over Flavio's face and neck. Your performance was, in a word, dreadful and embarrassing, pronounced Dad. That's two words, corrected Ben with a chuckle. Three, if you count the and. Don't get funny with me, young lad, snapped Dad. This is no laughing matter. I was ashamed of you. Ashamed. Yes, ashamed, grumbled Mum in agreement. Ben felt like he would give anything to disappear. He would give all of his past and all of his future just so he didn't have to be sitting in the back seat of his mum and dad's car right now. I'm sorry, Mum, said Ben. I want to make you proud. I really do. It was true, making his parents ashamed. Well, that was the absolute last thing he wanted, however stupid he thought they were sometimes. Well, you have a funny way of showing it, said Mum. I just don't like the dancing, that's all. That's not the point. Your mother spent hours making you the costume, said Dad. It's strange how parents always refer to each other as mother or father rather than mum or dad when you're in trouble. You made no effort up there on stage whatsoever, Dad continued. I don't think you even rehearsed once, not once. Me and your mother work night and day to give you the opportunities we never had and this is how you treat us. With contempt, said Mum. Contempt, echoed Dad. A single tear ran down Ben's cheek. He caught it with his tongue. It tasted bitter. The three sat in silence as the car rumbled home. No words were spoken as they got out of the car and went into their house. As soon as Dad opened the front door, Ben bounded up to his bedroom and slammed the door. He sat on his bed, still in his love bomb outfit. Ben had never felt more alone. He he was hours late to meet Granny. Not only had he let down his mum and dad, he had let down the one person he had grown to love more than anyone, his Granny. They were never going to steal the crown jewels now. Just at that moment, there was a quiet tap on his window. It was Granny. Dressed in her scuba diving gear, the old lady had climbed a ladder to reach her grandson's window. Let me in, she mouthed theatrically. Ben couldn't help but smile. He opened the window and hauled the old lady inside, like a fisherman might haul a particularly big fish onto his boat. You are very late, admonished Granny, as Ben helped her over to the bed. I know, I'm sorry, said Ben. We said seven o'clock. It's half past ten. The sleeping tonic I gave the guards at the tower will be wearing off soon. I'm really sorry. It's a long story, said Ben. Granny sat on Ben's bed and looked up at him and down. And why are you dressed like a demented Valentine's card, she demanded. As I said, it's a long story. It was a bit rich for Granny to criticise what he had on, considering she was dressed in a wetsuit and a scuba diving mask, but there wasn't time to get into that now. Quick boy, put on this wetsuit and follow me down the ladder. I'll start, I'll start up the mobility scooter. Are we really going to steal the crown jewels, Granny? Well, we are going to have a go, said the old lady with a smile. All right, I'll see you for chapter... 23.